Hi, it's Darnell with Wayover Recipes, and this is my review of the Bella 8 Quart Dual Basket Air Fryer. So it's got two baskets instead of one, and so let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Alright, so things are all unboxed now, and it just comes with one piece of paperwork, the manual, and this uh, manual doesn't give you a whole lot of extras, I mean it has the instructions, it does have a guide for certain foods that gives you like guidance on general cooking time and temperatures to use for different types of food. It has like one, two, three, four, five recipes. Just give you five recipes and that's all that they really give you in the manual. But the cooker has a polarized power plug. It doesn't have a three prong grounded plug looks like it's a few feet in length so for kitchen appliances a decent length cord but it's not grounded with the ground wire and the cooker is 1800 watts and they recommend that you use it on a separate circuit and for any of these kitchen appliances that draw a lot of power you should use them on a separate separate circuit if you use them on a circuit in your kitchen that has other stuff plugged in you are probably gonna blow your circuit because when you're using like a 1800 watt cooker that's what happens you got a kitchen appliance that draws a pretty good amount for a plug-in appliance but still using a whole lot less than your conventional oven or your conventional stovetop type stuff it's still going to use a lot less than those but with that you know it's 1800 watts so it's a pretty good draw but it has it relies on a polarized plug which is supposed to work but some of us prefer a nice ground wire now I'll get into the dimensions of the cooker. The dimensions are 14.9 inches in length, 14.39 inches in width, and 12.11 inches in height. The temperature ranges for this cooker are between 90 degrees to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That is going to definitely vary depending on the cooking function, what its capabilities are, but we'll go through the cooking functions in full detail a little later. Now each of the baskets is a four quart basket so that's how you get your eight quarts, two four quart baskets and the maximum weight is 3.75 pounds if you wanted to know how much weight you could put in each basket. Now let me show you around the cooker. On the top here is your air intake. The sides have nothing really remarkable but on the back is where you have the exhaust so the exhaust comes out of the back there. Now to give you a closer up view of the cooker, basically when we open up one of these baskets, we see down inside, it's got basically just the crisper tray there that you can take out when you want to clean, but it's the same exact thing on the left side, they're not very easy to slide back in, yeah, gotta pound it a little bit, and then on the right side we've got basically the same thing but kind of got to bang them to get them in there all right so here we have the ninja foodie eight quart dual basket air fryer next to the Bella I will say with the Bella underneath these baskets when you first unbox it there's some cardboard under the bottom here you got to get out but even after I remove that cardboard things still don't you still got to do a little extra hand action to get those doors closed, which is interesting. But let's go ahead and do a little uh, looking around, comparing things here. I'm going to compare the height of the two cookers to begin with. So I've got a tape measure here. And we can see that the Ninja Foodie comes up to a little over a foot. And the Bella does too. I think the Ninjas has got maybe a smidge a little taller, just a smidge. Now if I go from one side here to the other, I'm going to do this across the top so unfortunately you won't be able to see too well. But it's just under 15 inches on the Ninja. On the Bella across the top, it's looking like, uh, it's looking like about 14 and 
less than 14 and a half inches, not even 14 and a half. So the bell is definitely not as wide. Now, front to back, I'm going to do that. There's not really much in the back here as far as anything sticking out. But it's about 9 inches to here. But if I go to the handle, we're looking at maybe about 13 inches. Now with the Bella, if I just do front to back here, we're looking at almost 10, well, no, 9 and a half. It's about 9 and a half inches. And if I go out to the handle, I'm looking at just under 12 and a half inches up to the handle. So that's pretty interesting. Now let's go ahead and I'm just going to open one of these baskets. And I will say straight up, the Ninja feels sturdier. It feels a lot sturdier than the Bella. The Bella, all this metal on the Bella feels thinner. So, you know, it's a, I, I think the Ninja has a, just by feel, a sturdier grade. I mean, you can just tell that right off. But here's the, basically, crisper tray of both. They're basically about the same exact size. The Bella tray does fit into the Ninja snug. So, basically they are the same exact size as far as that's concerned. I will do a quick measurement inside the basket. You can see this way we've got just over 6 inches. And with the Bella basket, we've got just, well, just about six inches, maybe under. It's a little, a little slimmer there. That's interesting. Let's do this way. We've got nine inches that way. Let's do the Bella. Bella, we got nine inches. Now let's go inside the Bella from top to bottom. We got just under five inches. Top to bottom. And here we got just about under five inches so little uh, slight slight difference there but their crisper thingies there both fit you know pretty pretty snugly there so let me just see if the oh actually this is interesting now the Bella one will fit into the Ninja one but the Ninja one will not fit into the Bella that's interesting I mean it's in there but it's not snug it's not flush so you can get Bella's little crisper tray into the Ninja, but the Ninja's is just a smidge, just a smidge bigger, just a smidge. That's interesting. All right, and now we have the 10-quart Ninja Foodie Dual Basket Air Fryer with two 5-quart baskets next to the Bella, which is an 8-quart. And so we'll do some of the same quick measurements really quick again. From, well, we'll do it over here. From the top to the bottom here, we got about 13 inches on the Ninja. We got just over 12 on the Bella. Going side to side over the top here, I've got about 16 and a quarter versus about just under, let's see, just about 13, about 13 and a quarter there. And we go front to back, let's see, we still got about 9 inches there and up to the handle about 13 inches whereas with the Bella we had 9.5 and, and about 12 going front to back there. Now I'm pulling the air fry baskets out, we can compare the little crisper tray liner things. You can basically fit Bella's inside of there. You can fit Bella's into literally inside of the Ninja pretty much. Pretty much. And so measuring things up a little bit. We go side to side here. We got 7 inches versus the 6 with the Bella. We go this way. See we have 9 inches. And we go that way on the Ninja. We also have about 9 inches. Yes, about 9 inches there. Now, top to bottom there, we've got, let's see, let me make sure it's steady. Just under 5.5 inches versus 
just under five inches on the Bella. So those are the differences in sizing between the cookers of like design. Now I'm going to do an initial plug-in of the cooker here. So plugging things in there and we see this little light here. I'm hoping you can see it's very faint. But the power button, when I press the power button, then things light up with a left, right, and a dual cook. Dual cook is basically if you want it to cook the same basically type of cook in the same exact time on both sides. If you just wanted to use like one side, you could do like left and you could basically give it a function like air fry and you could then as things have lit up here you could give it a temperature you know play around with your temperature and then if you want to give it a time you can play around with your time there and you could do it like that and then if you want to go ahead and start your cook you could just start and you just start you know basically cooking on that side so I'm just going to stop it there and you see when I stopped it, it didn't do like any extra fan work or any extra cool down. We'll see if maybe later when things are really hot, if it does any added cool down for the sake of things being, you know, really hot. Now real quick, I've got things just set up like as if I was going to do an air fry. There's a shake reminder button that I want to talk to you about because the shake reminder button, basically you can enable or disable shake reminder and if it's like solid there then while things are cooking about two-thirds of the way through a cook any cook over three minutes you're going to get a shake reminder to come up but if you turn off shake reminder then when you're cooking it's not going to two-thirds of the way into a cook tell you hey shake your food so you have an option with this cooker whether or not you want to deal with it reminding you to shake the food and that's pretty interesting now I already talked to you about dual cook and about how that works but I wanted to show you, let's say you're cooking things at two different times, but you want them to finish at the same time. So let's say I had an air fry over here for 20 minutes, and then on the other side I hit roast. And let's say I wanted to do 35 minutes, but I want them to both end at the same time. There's this sync button, and you can press sync. And basically when you start, things will start cooking on one side and be on hold on the other. So we're holding on the longer side while we cook on the roast side. And basically, that allows you to cook on two sides and have it finish at the same time if you want things basically all done and hot at the same time. Now I'm going to talk to you in depth about each of the cooking functions. First one is air fry. And for air fry, the temperature ranges are 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And the cooking time is 1 to 60 minutes, so no more than an hour there. Next there's roast. Roast is 350 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Cooking time is one minute to one hour maximum. Then there's broil. Broil is locked in at the maximum of 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Maximum cooking time is 30 minutes. There is no mention with this cooker of having an issue like with the Ninja dual basket air fryer where you can't use the air broil on the Ninja on both sides at once. So I've got broil set here on one side and then I go to this right side and I hit broil over there and I could, let's see, we hit start and both sides are doing their broil thing at the same time. So we see that is not a problem for this cooker being able to use broil on both sides at once. That's one limitation with the Ninja. You can use everything on both sides except broil on the Ninja. So the next cooking function we'll talk about is bake. Bake is 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Cooking time ranges are between 1 minute to 60 minutes. Next is the reheat function. Reheat has a temperature range of 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Not 450, 400. And the cooking time is 1 minute to 60 minutes, 1 hour. Next is dehydrate, which has a temperature range of 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 170 degrees Fahrenheit and cooking times between 1 hour and 24 hours. Basically all the time 
for dehydrate is an hour so it's showing you like nine eight hours you can't and you don't want to dehydrate for minutes you're going to dehydrate for hours so that's how dehydration works now let's do some temperature testing I've got my temperature gauge here I'm going to put that right on down in there like so and close things up and try and yeah, give a little a little bit of arm strength on there to make sure you close it well but turning things on the left side set it to air fry kick the temperature up and if you hold it it zooms up real quick so I'm going to leave it at that 450 maximum 20 minutes I'm going to let it run for about 10 minutes and then check and I'm going to basically take what we get it after 10 minutes as what it can reach and I'm going to go ahead and hit start and we'll let it count down for 10 minutes and then I'll bring you back and we'll see what the temperature read is then all right 10 minutes is almost up I'm just feeling on the top things are pretty cool there side just a little warm this side well it's cool up here pretty cool back in the back it's kind of kind of warm back there but I'm able to basically tuck around it and had to kind of yank the thing out let's see what the temperature read is all right it's reading 450 solid so it did get to 450 I don't know how much it may have moved before I could pull it up but I think we did get to 450 I do believe you know it was at 450 pretty well so I'm gonna say that it can hold 450 pretty decent alright so I've let things cool down really well on this side I've got the temperature gauge here on the opposite side it hasn't been used yet and I want to see what happens and I hope I knock it over which I did do trying to keep it up get this thing closed without knocking it over but what I want to do now is I want to cook on this side see how hot things get on the unused side so turn it on on the left side air fry we're going to take the temp up to the max of 450 we'll leave it at 20 minutes cooking time but we'll check it after 10 and so with that we'll hit start I'm going to go ahead and let it run and I'll bring you on back. Things been cooking on the left side for 10 minutes now. I'm going to see what that unused right side oops, looks like. I accidentally hit that right button, but we see that basically things on the right side are nothing. The right side stays cool. And this is how dual basket air fryers work. One side gets hot, the side with nothing on it does not get hot. Some of you assume that because this side's hot, it's going to carry over to the other side. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. So, there we go as far as cooking with one side going, the other side not. Now, you do have a pause button I wanted to point out. You can always pause your cook and open up and, you know, do things. Or you can have it running. I'm going to open up now and you see it pauses on its own if I just open the basket and then when I close up it starts going again you can't do that with the Ninja if you pull a basket out on the Ninja it's going to just keep on running so a nice feature there on the Bella so I've just turned things off and I'm going to see how long it's cool down takes if it takes a few seconds or a few minutes this will be interesting All right, it didn't take very long, but cool down's finished. And so we're going to let things cool down, then we'll do another test. So now I've let things cool down real good. I'm going to put that temperature gauge back in there, close up. Do one final temperature test here. And this one, I'm going to be doing a dual cook type of thing where I air fry at 450 on both sides at the same time and see what happens. Now, you might be wondering, why don't I have a temperature gauge on the other side? because there are not enough dual basket air fryers being reviewed to warrant 
the expense of a second temperature gauge in my opinion I'm not putting out for it that's why very simple and so hit and start with that we'll let it go for 10 minutes and we'll see if things are the same or less when it's doing two sides at once all right things have been going for 10 minutes so I'm gonna just basically shut them off and we'll see you see our temperature is up in the 450 range. I can give you a better look at it. It's up in the 450 range there, so even doing two at the same time, we still get a nice, you know, in the 450 area temperature there. So basically, with the 1800 watts and doing two sides at once, it's able to distribute that heat pretty well. Now something I wanted to show you real quick regarding dehydration. This is the same for the Ninja Foodi 2 basket air fryer. When you're dehydrating, you can put stuff on the bottom there, and then you can put this on top, and then put some more on top of that to have two layers for dehydration, or four layers if you use both, both baskets at the same time. All right, so now I'm gonna do a test cook of using both sides of the air fryer at the same time and I've got myself here a four ounce codfish fillet fully frozen and I've got some chicken tenderloins for those fully frozen as well and I've got some extra light olive oil which has a fairly high smoke point so Lord willing we won't have any type of smoke issues and such and while I get some oil on these I'll just say I know some people feel that you know maybe some other temperature test could be done like maybe a lower temperature or all types of different things and all I'll say is there's no shortage of permutations and different configurations that could be done I do a few for you and the rest is up to you so I just do a few of them and leave it at that but basically getting some oil all over these so that the seasonings that I'm going to use will stick to the meats easily and for the seasonings I'm going to be using some Old Bay as well as some lemon pepper seasoning and I always say nothing in this video is sponsored and if there's been a video where I didn't say it it's only because I forgot nothing in that video was sponsored either <laughs> but uh, just getting it all over one side here and, and get the Old Bay on top of here and if you haven't had Old Bay then I don't know what to tell you. You got to just try it. You got to try it because all of us who have it know the deal, and you have you who have not, you just don't know what you're missing. You just don't. So getting these flipped over here, I'm gonna put the lemon pepper on there like so. And even though it's chicken and fish, these seasonings work great on both. Work equally as well on both the exact same way because this is just a real nice seasoning combination that's all I can say for that so just finishing up our seasoning up of things here all right I'm gonna go ahead and open up and put my fish over here on the right side and put my chicken tenderloins in here on this uh, right side here. I'm going to close the one up. I'm going to turn the power on. And I'm going to do a left side of air fry. I'm going to keep it at 400 but I'm going to bring that time down to 15 minutes. And I'm going to kill the uh, the shake thing I don't, I don't I'm not going to do any shaking or flipping I'm just going to let stuff cook and over here on the right side I'm going to do a roast and I'm going to bring the temperature down to 375 and I'm going to do it for now if I was using the Ninja Foodi I would do 19 minutes I would not do 20 I wouldn't do 18 I'd do 19 so I'm going to do 19 so basically with that I'm going to do the sink so I got that sink button pressed to sink the finish so this one will start and then this one will catch up later and so I'm going to go ahead and hit start with that and it starts cooking on that side, that side's on hold 
I'll bring you on back when this is all finished. So we're coming into the final seconds of the cook, and I wanted to mention that although I disabled the sink on the left side, I did not disable the sink on the right side. So two-thirds way into the cook, the right side gave me the shake single and not the left side. So you got to remember to disable shake on both sides when you're doing something different on both sides. But everything is all done now and going to get things out now. You see our finished chicken tenderloins there. And it, while that shake reminder is going on, the time continues to count down. It doesn't do anything different while uh, that shake reminder is going off. So it's just a reminder and nothing more. I forgot to check temp here. Yeah, they're hot. They're getting hot. Let's check our fish. It's in the 160, so it's done. It's well done. So, see if I can get it out without breaking it apart. Well, I broke it into half anyway. So, we got our fish here. And you can see the fish there looks pretty good. And I'm just going to without giving things much time to cool down, we'll thank the Lord for this food and just do a quick small taste test of the chicken. And a quick small taste test of the fish. The chicken is very moist by the way. And the fish has some serum on the exterior but inside it's moist. It's nicely done fish. So everything turned out decent the way that I like it. And so that's how you can do a two-sided cook. Now as far as cleaning, I do want to address that real quick. With cleaning, the baskets and these little grow plates inside, these air fry plates inside, they are top rack dishwasher safe. I personally wash it all by hand because everything lasts longer when you wash by hand with any cooker. The unit itself you just want to use a wet soapy cloth to basically clean off whatever needs to be cleaned off. Typically with these air fryers, these dual basket air fryers, things usually don't typically splatter up to the top much. I've shown that in uh, basically third day review of the Ninja Foodi XL2 basket air fryer. You can see that review and check that out there but things usually don't splatter up too much to the top but basically can use a wet soapy cloth to wipe the unit and then dry basically get the excess off dry it off and these you can wash by hand these accessories and if you need to soak them you can soak them but usually things don't stick to them too much all right so let's talk about the warranty this cooker comes with a two-year limited warranty so Basically, you've seen everything that it can do and all the functions and whatnot. And so it's a pretty decent little two-basket air fryer there. And so with all of that said, in the video description, lots of ways to help this channel. And I do hope that you did like this video. And if you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend. Leave your comments. Subscribe. Hit that notification icon. And good eating.